Hello, it's Markham Matosh here from Markham 3D, and this is part two of creating this landing gear. We were doing the first section of modeling. If you want full access to this straight away, jump over to Gumroad or jump over to my Patreon. And if you don't, please make sure you like and subscribe and hit that bell button. So let's do Alt H to unhide all our little bits and bobs. And then let's kind of put in what we're gonna do with these. So let's just move that off to the side. I'm gonna Shift D to duplicate. Let's rotate. 180 degrees and what I'm going to do is I'm going to scale that and what we've got here is at the moment it is um, not extended well sorry it's currently in its short mode I guess so really this piece needs to be probably about half the size all right so let's grab let's just delete that I'm going to grab this whoops let's duplicate it and then we'll move it over to the y-axis Let's go into wireframe, press one. I'm gonna box select everything. Let's go G to Y. So what do we got about here-ish? And let's now bring that over 180 degrees. And we'll kind of rotate that in. Let's scale it down. So in its most, most shortest form, it'll be there. But then if we kind of grab this whole section C, control L, and we'll just roughly look. It's gonna be about there. What we could ultimately do is just control Z all that, whoops. Control Z all that. We could probably scale it up a bit. And in actual sense, it might actually be smarter to have it more of an angle because then as that bends in, it'll kind of fold up more. Yeah, so let's go with that. I'm gonna scale that up and we'll have a nice big fat piston here. Actually, let's scale that in, just trying to get the scaling right here. And if I were to now select everything, Control L, G, Y, Y, or X, X, sorry. Nope, Z, Z. We can now move this piston along our normal. Because we rotated it in object mode, when we go into edit mode, we can move it along the normals of the object. So that'll work. So if I bring that back up here-ish, let's go G, Z, Z. And so that's gonna be fully extended. And if it's rotating around this point, I'm just trying to work out how much of that will it spin? Well, it doesn't really matter because we can always move that later. So let's keep that. I will actually duplicate this. Let's rotate that around to about here where it's fully extended. And do we go like, I say we do the exact same thing. The only problem is, is I'm just trying to think like, technically, would it be stable enough? I mean, it should, but that'll definitely pull up that whole area up. And then we'll have this small, incy wincy tiny piston just there. Now I kind of want to do keep the same size. I might just go Shift D. What I'm going to do is reset the rotation with Alt R. And let's kind of, let's put this back into position. Whoops, on the Z axis. Let's make it a bit smaller. G to the Z. Whoops, let's grab this section as well. G to the Z. And we will go G. Rotate that around the origin. And so, Ah, where's this going to sit now is the next question. Yeah, so this is interesting. I mean, we can put it here. Or, better yet, we put it like this. And then that will control... Let me put it right in there like that. 
and then that will control the rotation of that piston. So, I mean, even if we kind of make it smaller, something like that. Yeah, cool. I like that. With this piston, let's maybe move it over to the side. G to the X, Shift D, G to the X. And so that's working on the outside. This one here can be working in the middle, fine. Let's, what's this piece here? Let's just get rid of that because we no longer need that. We no longer need this. And what else? We don't need that one anymore as well. And then technically what will happen is this will fold up in between here. And then what we might actually do is kind of copy this curve onto the back of the foot. So it kind of goes up snug like so, like good, yeah. <laughs> actually like that 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 works quite nice so what we might actually do is these heads here will actually make them the thickness of this and then that way it's sitting directly on top of this arm so we're kind of like designing as we go um, with this section we could probably make it thicker so it sits in there um, and it goes through the whole section I reckon we might even just select all this oops get rid of this piece even though that's our top piece, that's fine. I'm going to select this, these, this, and this. I just reckon that's too thick. Let's scale it. So it's a little bit thinner. And then we can actually go to town on this one and scale on, whoop, scale on the x-axis. So something like that. And that to me seems a lot sturdier. Well, not a lot sturdier, but it looks a little bit more realistic and these pistons seem to fit it a lot better. So let's go G to the X. If we sit it like so, G to the X, and we sit it like so. Yeah, cool bananas. No, that won't work because then as we're pulling in, it'll actually kind of like hit on the pipe. So that's not going to work. The other alternative is if we rotate it like so, and we have it sitting on there, that'll pull up nicely. Let's go with that. All right, we're getting there. Shift D to the X. I'm going to plop that one in there like so. Nice. Beautiful. All right, so let's maybe start adding some details. Let's start off with this piece here. And what I'm going to do is, how are we gonna, how are we gonna come into this? Because technically one needs to be solid and the other one needs to be attached in the middle there. So maybe what we can do is put an edge loop through there. Let's go control B to do a bevel. And I'm gonna place it about here-ish. Let's press one, uh, two to go into edge mode. Let's alt, uh, shift alt, left click on those. I'm just gonna put in a bevel. And I've already got that extra edge in there. I can press control numpad minus and alt S to scale that in. There we go. And then press V to rip that piece. What we'll do here, and then we'll probably copy it over to the other side. Let's do control B to do a bevel. Alt left click that edge. I to do an inset. And then we'll do another bevel here. So we've got that extra line. Control numpad minus. That didn't work. So alt left click on that center line. Let's just go G to the X and push that in. And then we can just give it some extra detail. We can just push this out. Let's go control B. And so now it looks like there's a giant pin in there. So from here, what I might do is shift, oops, alt left click to get that edge. Shift S, and we're gonna put the cursor in the center of that circle. So cursor to selected. From here, I'm gonna press V to rip this section. Let's do control L. Now let's select this side as well, control L, delete vertices. From here, I'm going to select all these, control L to select everything that's linked. Let's do a shift D to duplicate. 
I'm going to come up here to the pivot transfer in the top there and go 3D cursor. So now whatever we scale will be from the 3D cursor. I can go scale, S for scale, minus one and enter. And there we go. So now we've copied that across. From here, what we can do is probably just select everything, press the M button to merge and merge by distance. And you can see we've got 96 vertices removed. That was interesting. I wasn't expecting so many. Ah, so what's happened is we've merged this one and also these pieces in here because I ripped them. All right, so let's come in. I'm just gonna put some bevels on there. Control B to do a bevel. There we go. And let's just go shade smooth. Looks like yuck. And that's because the normals are facing the wrong way. So if we go back into edit mode with tab, select everything, shift N. There we go. You can see it still looks a little bit yuck. What we can do is come into the object data, select normals, auto smooth. And that's a bit better there. We can increase this, you know, to like 45. Oops, sorry, we can go down. And now we've got those harsh edges and that's if you want. I prefer like that, but obviously that's up to you how you would like to do that. 